This video is going to be about joint distributions. That is distributions over more than one variable. So far, we've only looked at distributions over one variable, but you can have joint distributions, that is distributions, that show up with two variables. So imagine two random occurrences taking place, but you're measuring uh, the two as one unit. So we'll look at some uh, joint density functions, since we have been focusing on in this class defining distributions relative to their density functions. We'll then look at three examples. I try to make uh, I tried to make pictures of these examples. Unfortunately, I couldn't get R to make these plots for us in a simple way. So the best I can offer is. Um, plot made with another tool, and I'm just not going to show you the other tool because it would make everything way more complicated than it needs to be. And I will, that. I will leave at the end of this presentation a practice problem for you all. Joint density functions. So the requirement for a joint density function named f is that it starts in more than one dimension. We will just focus on the real numbers cross with the real numbers. So that is the two-dimensional real numbers. Imagine like a plane of real numbers instead of just a line. Imagine an entire plane of real numbers. And the function f goes from two-dimensional space into one-dimensional space. That's hard to imagine at first, but all it really says is that your density function takes two arguments here and then returns a single number. So what we require of this density function is that it be greater than or equal to zero. Since this function will return a single number for any two arguments you give it, we require that whatever number this returns be non-negative just as we saw for our uh, density functions in one dimension. And then we also require that the sum or the integral over the sample space be equal to 1. So the same sort of thing as we saw before. We need density functions to give us non-negative numbers, and we need the area under the function to be equal to 1. This is just our generalization of um, integration or summation, depending on whether or not the sample space is uh, uncountable or countable or smaller, so countable or finite. So whether or not this density function defines a discrete or continuous distribution, we want the area under the function to be equal to 1. And really, that's all there is to density functions in more than one dimension. You could theoretically extend this to more than two dimensions, but for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to focus on two dimensions in this class. And then um, these same conditions just basically hold uh, off into higher dimensions. So let's consider some hopefully simple examples. You could have a uniform distribution defined with a sample space of 1, 2. So that is just the set of numbers 1 and 2. And then the Cartesian product of the same set. So essentially, this is the space. Oops, this is the set 1, 1, 1, 2. That's the first element of the first set and the second element of the second. 2 comma 1 and 2 comma 2. So if you were to imagine this on a plot then, look at busting out straight lines to try to make the prettiest picture I can for you all. If you imagine, here's two dimensions, but now have this extra dimension that's like extending out of the um, whiteboard here into, like at you almost. 
So we can have dimensions x and y, and then f of x and y on the z axis, if you will. So then we just have points 1 and 2 on both sides, 1 and 2. So here is an example of a discrete uniform distribution. Now remember, the key thing for uniformity is that the points have the same density. Each point in the sample space has the same density. The way I'm going to draw density here, because my freehand is not excellent, I'm going to draw density by the size of the dots. And what I'm trying really hard to do here is draw dots of equal size to represent the density as the size of the point. Because it's a uniform distribution, I'm trying to draw equal points to show that each of these has density 0 0.25. So our function f of x, y essentially equals 0 0.25 for every combination. of x, y in s. That is, if you plugged in 1, 1, you'd get out 0.25. If you plugged in 1, 2, you'd get out 0.25. That's what's defining uniformity for us. So you could also imagine this point of having these, um, of these points like all at the same height, something like this. But my freehand isn't terribly good, so these should theoretically be coming up off of this plane into this z-axis, but I just don't think my freehand drawing of such a plot is, ex is very good at all. So I much prefer for freehand drawings, instead of having these weird seaweed-like squiggly lines up, is just focusing on these points being of the width or the size that we want this z-axis to hold. So imagine these points are coming up to a height equal to the size of the point itself. And I do have a like programmatic way to draw this picture for you, and I will do that in um, just a second. First, let's look at a non-uniform distribution. So this distribution has the same density for all points in the sample space. But you can imagine another distribution something like not uniform. There is no name for such a distribution that I'm about to make up, but we will just title it not uniform for now. And you could have, so now that you guys are a little bit more comfortable with my picture, I'll just move on a little bit quicker. You could have a y-axis and an x-axis, and all the same points we imagined before. But now here, you could define a really big point. So now imagine um, a point coming up into the z-axis that's really tall, and then some really relatively small points to say they don't quite have as big a density, and then just a dot over here. Let's see if I can make that dot better. Just a dot there to say this point has the most density, the biggest density, these two points have about the same density of about medium height, and this one has the same density. It doesn't really matter what these points are so long as they are all non-negative, and in this case, because it's a discrete distribution, they sum to one. So we might say the point one one has density 0 0.5. The points, let's see, 0 0.1 defined at 1, 2, and 2, 1. So that gets us to 0.7. Is that right? 0 0.5, 0 0.1 is 0 0.6, 0 0.1 is 0 0.6. Oh, that doesn't work out. Let's change this one. That doesn't match my picture quite the way I want it to. So we could say 0 0.2. So that's 0 0.5, 0 0.2 for this point, and 0.2 for that point gets us to 0 0.9 and then 
So there we have it. That is a new density function with non-negative density and the points sum to 1. 0.5 plus 0.2 for this point, plus 0.2 for this point, plus 0.1. And that should get us to 1. So all the area under this density function is equal to 1. Now, if I were to draw this If I were to draw these distributions programmatically, it might look like this. It's a little bit more obvious on this plot of equal height for all of these. It's a little bit hard to see, but I think it's a little bit better than um, my hand-drawn picture. Similarly, here is a non-uniform distribution with one point that has a very big density relatively, two points that have the same density, and then one point with slightly less. Notice that. The density is all positive numbers, and the points, the density under the points adds up to one. So let's take, let's look at a third example that um, is a continuous distribution. They call this one the bivariate normal. It is a normal distribution in two dimensions. And so you can see it's something like the standard normal shape, but now it's almost like been spun around. So you almost have like a perfectly symmetric hill that you're looking at. And they call this the bivariate normal distribution. So let's just try um, one last example. Consider the joint density f of x, y equal to 2 times x plus y for 0 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 1. So the two things we need to check to make sure this is indeed a joint density is that it's a function of two arguments that returns a single number x is um, on the sample space of the uh, continuous interval from 0 to y, and y itself lives on the interval from x to 1. So this is indeed a continuous density function. What we need to check is that f of x, y is greater than or equal to 0. And here, look, x is bounded below by 0 and y is bounded below by x, which itself is bounded below by 0. So indeed, this thing is going to be non-negative. The second condition is a little bit harder to check. We want to make sure that the integral of this density function integrates to 1. So in this case, we have a double integral since there's two variables we will integrate the density function itself. It doesn't matter what order you integrate in. So if you want to do y first as a practice problem, go for it. The only thing you need to be careful of is the order of integration has to match the appropriate bounds. Since we're integrating over x first, the bounds on x are from 0 to y. So we'd have to go 0 to y for x. And then the bounds on y, after you get rid of x, and here comes the tricky part, if you get rid of x, because you've integrated over it already, then the bounds remaining on y are 0 to 1. So as your first practice problem, I recommend you try switching the order of integration here and practicing with these bounds. So let's see, this is just going to go. We'll be left with... 0 to 1. We've got, okay, so we're integrating with respect to x first. So 2 times x integrated with respect to x is just going to be x squared plus 2 times y integrated with respect to x is just 2xy. We want to evaluate that from 0 to y, and then we're going to integrate with respect to y. Okay, so I'm just going to move a line down here. So let's see, um, fill in y for all of the x's, 
we're going to go with 0 to 1, y squared plus um, 2y squared minus, and now fill in the 0 for all the x's. Well, that's just 0 and 0, so that worked out quite nicely for us. Okay, so now we're going to integrate this with respect to y. So we've got y to the third over 3 plus y to the third times 2 over 3 from 0 to 1 is equal to. Okay, so now we're going to plug in 1, and thankfully we'll plug in 0 in the for the second case, and everything's just going to go to 0. So really we're just adding up 1 third plus 2 thirds is equal to 1. Check. The area under this density function across the support is equal to, follow the arrow, 1, just as it should be. It took us a little bit to kind of make sure we got the integral there correctly, but once you do, this problem does work out uh, as it should. So I'm going to leave you with a similar practice problem to this, though I'm going to ensure that the bounds, the sample space, is a little bit easier to deal with than the one we just did. So here is your practice problem. Ensure f of xy equal to 6x squared times y for 0 less than x less than 1. Let's write that a little cleaner. And 0 less than y less than 1 is a density function. That is, you should check conditions 1. f of xy is non-negative. You should ensure this. And 2 the expectation that is, in this case, a double integral across the bounds on x and y is equal to 1. That is your practice problem. So this video has introduced us to joint density functions. They're very similar, so hopefully not too terrible, to density functions we've seen before. We just have a little bit more difficult time visualizing them because now we are starting from a plane and working our way kind of up in some sort of three-dimensional space. But once you get the images kind of fixed in your head, I don't think this concept is too difficult.